In this class, we will try to understand the IPM package recommended by various agricultural universities or ICR institutes across the country. Coming to the management of these red gram pass, which are most important, lot of studies have been made across the country and various IPM modules have been designed and recommended for the farmer's benefit. In this particular insect, because of the coordination of various universities including University of Agriculture Sciences Raichur, ICRISAT located in Hyderabad and one of our national institute on National Center for Integrated Pest Management. We have developed a forecasting model using rainfall which is working very efficiently. You can see this graph which clearly indicates four quarters. This forecasting model has been developed using 30 years of rainfall making two situations. A refers to the average rainfall of a particular location for the last 30 years from June to September. Then B refers to the average rainfall that occurs during October month only. Then considering these two factors, the incidence in November which is the peak period of incidence is predicted. If you just see the if the average rainfall from June to September is low and if the average rainfall in October is low then there will be a moderate incidence. If the average rainfall is high then if the average rainfall is low, then we get a very low incidence in the November period which every farmer wants it. Both the average rainfall from June to September and average rainfall in October, if it is more then we get a moderate incidence. Much more serious is this particular quarter which indicated, which has been indicated by a red color. If the average rainfall from June to September is low, then if the average rainfall in October is more than the average rainfall, then we get a very severe incidence in November month. So this is a sort of prediction that we are getting. This season we had this particular situation. As I said, the IPM recommended involves 12 components in case of a pigeon pea pest starting from you know some are flowing. By doing this we can expose some of the hibernating pupae to high temperature or to predation whereby the carryover population can be reduced. Time of sowing which is most important and the studies have clearly indicated that up to June end we get less incidence in November whereas any delayed sowing after 15th of July going to get higher and higher incidence in a November month. Then another cultural practice what we have is intercropping or mixed cropping with the pigeon pea and sorghum. If it is intercropping 1 is to 2 rosea is recommended. If some farmer wants to go for mixed cropping normally we advise 250 grams of sorghum seeds to be mixed with the red gram and then sowing should be taken up. Intercropping or mixed cropping mainly helps in the conservation of natural enemies. You can see in this graph clear cut various predatory species like wasp, coccinellids, redwood bugs, chrysopa and so on including the predatory birds, black drongo doing their job in reducing the pest population significantly. Then another cultural technology is removal of weed particularly the Lagasca mollus weed which grows all along the bund should be removed. That serves as a major source for egg laying, as a major source for larval survival during the off season. Then when the crop is in vegetative stage, one of the important cultural practices recommended is nipping. Nipping is removing the growing central shoot thereby you know it reduces the height and encourages primary and secondary branches thereby the plant protection becomes much easier because it is a at the the plant grows to a manageable height and lot of studies have also indicated wider spacing 
also reduces the pod borer damage. Another important component of IPM is monitoring. In this case monitoring is more important, we have various methods for monitoring also. One is pheromone and light trap monitoring, visual counting of actual number of eggs and larvae, then visual estimation of crop damage either it may be a pot damage or seed damage. What farmers do is they immediately go to the field and whenever the damage is there, whenever the larvae is in the grown up stage, then they apply insecticides thereby they have already lost the crop and more so the spraying cost also is a burden to them. So that is why monitoring is an important tool in IPM. In the first method of monitoring we can use pheromone trap. We can set up about 5 traps per hectare to attract male moths. The average economic threshold level uh, suggested is 4 to 5 moths per trap per day become to take up or to initiate uh, insecticide application. And then in the second method of uh, monitoring as I said you know we can use the egg population or the larval population. If it is egg population it becomes a 2 egg per plant, if it is larvae 1 larvae per plant. On random about 10 to 15 plants one has to count and then average if the figure is crossing this economic threshold level then immediately one has to go for control measures. As a first spray in case of a pigeon pea up to say the flowering starts after 60 days normally with the onset of a flowering only the helicoverpa or the maruka damage is seen. The egg laying takes place with the flowering commencement. That is why with 50 percent flowering we have to go for monitoring egg population based on the ETL. As a first spray we can use insecticidal application belonging to ovicides. Very good number of ovicides have been listed here with the recommended dosage they can be applied as a first spray. Then as a second spray once again based on economic threshold level of egg population or pheromone trap catches or larval population one need to go for botanicals as a first preference or else insect growth regulator as a second preference if can also be used. As a, a, a preference neem seed kernel extract 5 percent is found to be very effective for this uh, farmer have to collect neem seeds in the last season roughly we need about uh, 2 kg per acre. They should be crushed in the previous night, they should be immersed in the water and the next day morning uh, the suspension has to be squeezed and then mixed with uh, known quantity or 200 liters of water. To this we can add some soap solution so that uh, proper uh, uh, emulsion and dispersion takes place in the spray mixture. Otherwise another um, most effective botanical recommended was mixture of chilli 0.5 percent and garlic 0.2 percent extract which is found to be very effective in reducing the helicover population in the early stage. If this is not possible as a third option we have a growth regulating insecticide Navaluron at uh, the recommended dosage can also be sprayed. Then uh, again based on uh, the economic threshold level, third spray is recommended. Again we have the option here as an option, first option spraying of a microbial insecticide Helicoverpa NPV at the rate of 250 larval equivalents per hectare to be sprayed. After 5 days we find large number of larvae, fully grown larvae hanging from the top of the plant. They are all virus infected larvae. Those larvae can also be collected, crushed and then suspension can be further sprayed either solely or in combination with any of the insecticides which is more effective. If NPV is not available then we have the recommendation of two more insecticides which are found to be safe, greener molecules again at a very low dosage you can just see 0.12 ml per liter of water or 0.2 grams per liter of water. 
then as a fourth spray because this is a stage wherein uh, the larvae will be feeding on the developing pods which inflicts maximum damage. So, during this period some of the most effective new molecules have been recommended across the country by various scientists. I have indicated here all the new molecules so again which are greener molecules and again the quantity recommended is very low if you just see these figures per liter compared to the conventional insecticides wherein we were recommending 2 to 5 ml per liter. In situations where spotted pod borer or Weber that is Maruka damage is there specific recommendation of DDVP or dichlorovas to be added which is a fumigant and it should be mixed with any of the recommended insecticide like profenophos or methomil or even neem seed kernel extract. You know the addition of DDVP is a fumigant it makes because the nature of the damage of Maruka is it webs, it remains inside the web and then feeds. So, you have to make the larvae to come out and then the contact insecticide works. So, that is why combination of this is more effective. And in situations where pod bug and pod fly is a problem, we need to go for systemic insecticides. So, the ones that I have listed here in this table and the dosage can be noted for incorporation in the IPM. In addition to this, some of the other mechanical methods also need to be incorporated. One of the simple if labor is available easily you know the shaking of the plant because at that stage you know all the seed setting will be over part development will be taking place fully grown larvae can be collected in this plastic or cloth. So, these larvae can also be used for mass production of NPV in the laboratory also. And of course, the erection of dead wood branches or the live sorghum branches almost about 20 per hectare helps because this is a very good predator black drongo which can predate sitting almost 1 meter radius wherever the helicoverpa larvae is there it can pick up and then feed on this. The stage of the larvae is so much none of the insecticide works against this stage wherein this black drongo can reduce the population of these grown up larvae. Another important component to be considered in IPM is use of spray equipment. We need to use high volume rather than ultra low volume spray. For high volume we have to use either power operated high volume sprayers or knapsack sprayers or HTTP sprayers or gutter sprayers. Some of them have been shown in this photograph knapsack foot sprayer HTTP sprayer. Another important thing that one should note is never use these ultra low volume sprayers which are also called as a CDA sprayers controlled droplet applicators. For the former it looks easy to apply using these sprayers because of their low weight more area can be covered in an area in one day, but the major disadvantage is there is no suitable chemical available for these sprayers because of the drift problem and because of the high concentration that the insecticide is used and which results in high hazards to the environment not only to the environment to the spraying person itself and more so after spraying there is a quick evaporation of the spray molecule thereby the spray becomes most ineffective. That is why not to use these evil way sprayers in the pigeon pea ecosystem. Now, considering all these IPM components from 1 to 12 if adopted certainly the production and productivity of red gram yield can be increased with the maximum net profit. Thank you.